2018, government made a major injection of funds to deal with widespread infrastructural issues at schools across the island. Hello, I am Chris Santney. In this piece, we take a look at the amazing work accomplished and the impact on the education sector. With an annual overall budget of over $170 million, the education system had in years past just $1 million of that figure allocated for the execution of infrastructural repairs on the over 100 schools on the island. Added to that, many of the schools were very old and some in a terrible state of disrepair. The fact that many of those schools were made with timber made the task of infrastructural repairs even more challenging. Yes, in our tropical paradise, these little critters make old and new wood their haven and create havoc on school roofs, ceilings, door jams and partitions. And the issue was widespread. In 2018, the state of disrepair to school buildings was at staggering levels, with other issues apart from just termite and woodworm infested timber confronting the education sector head on. There were the usual issues of plumbing, tile and electrical repairs, as well as damaged windows and surfaces needing a fresh coat of paint. However, there were also other really troublesome issues of roofing, in some cases needing total replacement. There were also the issues of crumbling concrete floors, exposing reinforced steel and rusted steel frames to school buildings. Well, a lot of the schools were in disrepair. We had struggled with previous years trying to accomplish small repairs as we went along. But with the intervention of a bigger budget this year, a lot was able to be accomplished repairing um, when it comes to capital repairs, major repairs in the schools, changing of roofs, new wings being built, painting holistically, uh, electrical works, major stuff that were outstanding for a number of years, probably even decades at certain facilities. One million dollars proved insufficient over the years to alleviate the infrastructural issues of the large number of the island schools. The mammoth task ahead to fix the problem would certainly require more, 40 times more. Government needed to take action to bring urgent relief to the many students and indeed principals and teachers who had been clamoring for years for more significant repairs to be done to school infrastructure. Equally too, a significant injection of funds would be required to address the untenable situation. I will re-emphasize and say that $10 billion is only a drop, drop in the bucket as it relates to the funds required to bring our schools up to an acceptable standard. But indeed, it was a very good commitment on the part of the government to invest in education in that, in, in, in that manner. I must confess that I did not expect much of what I saw. And that is why I continue to have a very soft spot for our educators because I can tell you every day that they're on this job they go beyond the call of duty and I always add that yes we are very grateful and the government has made that investment but it still is a mere quarter if not less of what we require to bring the buildings up to par and that is why, no matter how much you spend in any given school, there are also several other principals saying, but my school. <laughs> yes, the ministry had a plan to accomplish much within a short space of time, requiring the reconstituted plant and equipment department of the ministry headed by Aldin Louis-Fanan to make it happen. 
and in time for the reopening of school for the new academic year. Our crew being technical officers and very versed and, and adapt to construction as a whole, we're able to go into every single facility, itemize work to be done, execute them with the budget allowed, and um, change basically for the better the built environment in which all our students, teachers, and, and even uh, the, the teachers, pe people of the, the, the PTA, were able to see a difference and feel a difference and therefore flourish in the environment which we created for them. It had been a very challenging time for the Ministry of Education. First, with the very small allocation for school rehabilitation and also to that the fact that the plant and equipment unit was based at the Ministry of Infrastructure. The $10 million and the, the department being reassigned to the Ministry of Education was a very good move, apt, timely because it meant that we could have worked together to ensure that we got maximum value out of that $10 million. Prior to that, there had been all of the concerns and the challenges, especially at the various schools when the union had to get involved, because we know that our school infrastructure, our school plant is very much in a deteriorating and dilapidated condition. Decades of, of issues at the various schools. So these $10 million definitely came in very handy to allow us to address significantly some of the work that had to be done at the school. Many schools around the island needed attention, some more than others. One school in particular with an entire wing remaining unused and out of bounds to students and teachers was the Fear for Primary. With a deteriorated roof and a failing roofing steel frames, contingencies had to be adopted to house the affected classes. A new roof now in place meets the expectations of the school principal, alleviating problems associated with non-use of the building. However, the task was not an easy one at all for the plant and equipment unit. In the Viewford Primary School, we have a brand new roof. The external walls have been touched up with paint. All plumbing works have been fixed. Electrical installation, new ceilings in classrooms. We were able to accomplish renovations on 80% of schools island-wide. And though it was a late start with the renovation works, we were able to meet our goal. The refurbished V4 primary wing also helped the Ministry of Education solve an issue at the neighboring Beanfield Secondary, which grew incapable of enrolling new students for the 2018 academic school year, making parents of students who had chosen the school at the common entrance level very uncomfortable. The thought of not allowing students who had sat the exams and assigned a place at the school could not sit well with the principal of Beanfield and indeed the Minister for Education. Following much consultation, it was decided that part of the now refurbished block of the VA4 primary would be used to house the students. The once derelict block presently houses two Form 1 classes and one Form 2 class of the Beanfield Comprehensive. We've tried to do a very good job in terms of delivering quality education at the Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary School and our parents would like us to continue the work. That is why they were very pleased that the ministry found a solution to the situation of the lack of space so that we can continue the work that we're doing at the Binfield Comprehensive Secondary School. The extent to which stakeholders are willing to go to ensure that their children attend that school tells me that it is a school of choice, tells me that they have distinguished themselves as a secondary school in the South, and clearly children aspire. Children dream of attending that school. Children wish to attend that school, and that speaks volume. The Rosso Combined School received an entirely new block, which has become very handy for the students and the community at large. It had been infested with um, termites for a while, but we were still using it, but um, we were very careful because the flooring was very bumpy due to um, the, the infestation. This building has served us very well from the time it has been erected, and um, 
the, it is very comfortable, more comfortable than what we had before. The Miku Primary School is another institution which received extensive repairs to its infrastructure. The general works have met the satisfaction of the school principal. We had works done on most of our blocks. We have four blocks in total and three of these are totally refurbished from the inside to the outside. We have freshly painted walls, we have new ceilings, we have new light bulbs, electrical works were done, we have new furniture. We have a brand new school and for this we are very grateful. The Babano Secondary School had issues with its roof contained as well as other small issues around the school. It complements the wonderful job already done by students with support from their teachers to beautify the school with painted murals. The physical environment is being addressed. Um, the teachers now are feeling a lot better, the students. It's a healthier environment um, for both staff and students. And we are happy with the progress of the works. Yes, we would have, lo would have loved it to, be, to have gone um, a little faster, but we are happy with what has been done. In some cases, simple repairs have had major impacts on the environment and appearance of the schools. Paint jobs, refurbishments of toilets, and other plumbing issues. Widespread electrical issues were also successfully tackled by the team. The same was true for schools in District 4. We saw a lot of work being done at the schools and we were quite pleased with the amount of effort that was put into refurbishing and getting the schools ready for the new academic year. Um, the principals have expressed um, their satisfaction. There is still some work to be done, but they are happy with the amount of work that was done in a short space of time. One of the major problems the plant and equipment team faced was the large number of schools with ceiling and partition issues because of termite infestation. An extensive number of schools benefited from ceiling refurbishment from wood to PVC. Termite-infested moving partitions were replaced with durable dividers that are a lot easier to handle. It was a long wait and um, persons were frustrated, teachers were frustrated because there are so many disadvantages teaching in, a, in an open hall. I am really happy that, the, that we are recipients of this beautiful gift and it looks durable and we hope that our parents and our students and our teachers can take good care of it because I know it, is, it may have cost a hefty, a hefty sum. Infrastructural works always seem to beautify and enhance the appearance of the school compound. However, education officials say equally important is the relief and the peace of mind to conduct instruction of classes without the stresses associated with needed repairs. The impact on the holistic well-being of principals, teachers and students alike, education officials say, will eventually result in safer and friendlier schools that are better managed, added to that, higher motivation and positive results on instruction. Research has shown that an environment that is conducive with all the physical amenities and the appropriate space in terms of the physical building and the furniture is important for students to learn and develop. There is the, the likelihood of less absenteeism on the part of teachers, less um, lateness as well for students. Um, in terms of the student, there is student being at school because the environment is inviting to them. And so it creates an atmosphere for students to want to come to school. It, there is also the issue of motivation for students. Students are motivated because the environment is one which encourages them to come. There is the issue of self-esteem. We know definitely that an environment that is conducive to learning really allows our students to excel and the teachers who are placed in that environment obviously would want to put the best because now they feel that you know, their concerns are being addressed. They feel more motivated and inspired to instruct our students. So we're hoping that with the interventions at the various schools that it can really alleviate some of the challenges, but at the same time motivate and inspire our teachers, our students, our school leadership to do better. Despite the expected positive impact of the 2018 works, the reality on the ground is that there are still a lot of outstanding infrastructural issues at schools that last year's injection of $10 million could not meet. Ministry officials are confident in dealing with those outstanding matters with another round of major infrastructural works. The government of St. Lucia has made education a priority 
And in this new financial year, 2019, 2020, education is still high on the cards. And we have been given another $10 million to address infrastructural works at our educational institutions. So we can see the commitment is there. It means too that it gives us the opportunity to plan more holistically in terms of what can be done. I will confess that the bias this summer um, would include those schools that are earmarked to be merged. Because if it is you are going to be merging schools, consideration must be given to what that new outfit would look like and to make adequate provision for those students who will be joining the compound. So I really want to thank the team for somehow being able to make that dollar stretch to have people understand what our priorities are and that everyone will be attended to in turn and we continue to ask for everyone's patience. grateful for what we have been able to achieve. This is not a normal thing that had occurred in the past. A lot more work was able to be accomplished and I'm hoping for an even better year to come. With another $10 million being made available to undertake another round of works on school infrastructure, school management and students can certainly look forward to even better surroundings and upgraded facilities within their institutions. As the Ministry of Education links this with the Child Friendly Schools Framework, Model Safe Schools Program and the Education for Democratic Citizenship Program to help enhance instruction and boost morale within the classroom. Well, that's how we come to the end of our program. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Chris Satney, thanking you for watching.